ओम अस्तु मा सद्गमय कनसो मा ज्योतिर्गमय मृत्युर्मा अमृत गमय ओम शांति 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 लीडर्स फ्रॉम अनरियल टू रियल लीडर्स फ्रॉम एक्वेस्ट नॉलेज लीडर्स टू लॉर्ड फ्रॉम डेथ टू इमोटिलिटी ओम पीस 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 dear swami shardana ji the members of ramkrishna center of south africa as well as the center here in venismith the dignitaries present here sister sudhas dear friends i am very happy to be here this afternoon i have been in for a tour of south africa as you know I came here about a week back, uh, and now day after tomorrow, I'm going back to India after visiting Mauritius for a couple of days. The days have gone so quickly. A few days back, I was preparing for coming to South Africa, and it's a, now is the time for preparing myself to leave South Africa. <laughs> But it was a very good. This is experience to meet all the people. Very nice to meet you here in South Africa, and uh, very nice people. A great revolution coming in the country of South Africa after the new regime. A lot of changes are taking place, and very enlightened audience here. I'm very happy to meet you all in this town of Lady Smith. When first I read the name, I thought it is the name of a person. Maybe she may be the chief guest inaugurating the. Function, but they can't be heard. No, that is the name of the city, Ladysmith. Today's subject, as you know, management of everyday life. The most important thing that we have to bear in mind is the name management. Some or the other, from last few years, it has become a sort of a misnomer. management has come to mean for all of us more or less business management whenever we talk of management we say business management but actually speaking management is a very broad based term it affects every aspect of life not only the business that is why in the latest book of peter drucker the latest book is the best of peter drucker he points out that from last 60 years we have been misusing this name management when it started management meant a very broad term an organized common sense the science of working in any aspect of life which would give us the best of output with the minimum of input and resources in the best possible manner with the best quality in the minimum possible time but over a period of years somehow management has come to mean business management which is not true just as orthopedics is not medicine it is only a branch of medicine so number one we have to remember management is a very broad based term which affects every aspect of life and every one of us whether we are in the corporate world whether we are in the, we are the professional world whether we are working in the office where we are teachers whether we are students whether housewives each and every human being has to learn the management of everyday life because it affects every aspect of our and there are various spheres in which this management wisdom can be applied the fifth m is becoming very important in the field of management normally in the field of management they say management means management of four m what are they management of money 
financial management, management of materials, materials management, management of machines, production planning and control, management of men, that is personal management. These are the four M's. Normally, management is supposed to be linked to. But now, the fifth M is becoming very important. And that is the management of mind. There was a photograph in the Time magazine some time back, in the cover page of Time magazine. And the photograph showed two brains, two halves of two brains. And then in the cover story it was written, America in the mind of Japan, in the mind of America. And they say that Japan has gone on economic front and right on American soil, there were 700,000 Americans working in Japanese industries. But then, after some, after some time, the Ministry of Health of Japan brought out these statistics for the first time. 42% of the executives and employers of 44 years and above in Japan are suffering from mental disorder and 100 new mental hospitals opening on an emergency scale. They have won on the economic front, financially, with TQM, Total Quality Management, and now TQP, Total Quality Personnel, but a lot of executives going, ending up in mental hospital with a lot of stress. So now, they are searching for the fifth M, Management of Mind which will give them not only productivity, which will not only give them success, which will not only give them prosperity, but will also give them peace of mind. And now in Japan, they are recognizing the great value of Master Shita. The Master Shita, the chairman of Master Shita Electric Company, many years back had warned Japan then we will have to follow the spiritual path in the corporate sector also if we want to have peace of mind along with prosperity. And so he started an institute called PHP and a journal called PHP. What is PHP? P prosperity. Prosperity is a must if we want to enjoy life. Second, along with that we must help both physical and mental. If you don't have physical health, how do you enjoy? You have a lot of funds, but the doctor says you can't take food except in tranquilizers and antibiotics and injections. What is the use of a lot of funds? Or we may have the best model car, but the doctor says no, you have a heart problem, you can't drive a car. In mental hospital, if you have a mental problem, you are in a mental hospital, of what use is your great bank deposit in the Swiss bank? So, health, physical and mental. And third, P, peace of mind. It is the most important thing. Peace of mind. Without peace of mind, all these will be of no avail. So, PHP, he started an institute called PHP, and a journal called PHP, Master Shita, and he wrote a book, the name of the book, Not for Bread Alone. That is the sentence from Bible. A man cannot live by bread alone. Men cannot live without bread, that is true. But man cannot live by bread alone. A dog can live by bread alone. A donkey can live by bread alone. But a human being cannot live a bread alone. He needs little butter also along with bread. And not only butter, he also wants clothes and he wants to have a house. Not only that, he wants something else that is peace of mind, which is a very rare commodity nowadays. And so, this wisdom is dawning and the fifth M is becoming important. According to Chicago Best Research Corporation, 
40 com 40 percent of the companies in America are having regular courses on stress management. Stress management is becoming very important for two ever for two success and fulfillment of life. Another thing that is coming, the fourth wave of management is slowly sweeping the world. The first wave in the field of management was the British style of management when work study, work measurement, tailors was work measurement were involved. Second was the wave of American style of management when Peter Drucker became the guru. Third wave was Japanese style of management when TQM, Total Quality Management, Zero Defect and the extreme productivity coupled with the extreme efficiency and perfection became the demand of the hour. And now, slowly, the fourth wave has started coming to the world and that is holistic style of management based on Vedanta philosophy, based on Indian philosophy, a spiritual based management is coming and various books are coming out, new books are coming out where they now regard that spirituality is at the core of management of anything, whether it's a corporate sector, whether it's at the home, whether it's the management of an educational institution, or whether it's management of life. This fourth wave is slowly coming up. The name of some of the books are God is my CEO. That is the name of the book. God is my CEO. Chief Executive Officer. God is my CEO. And in America, Richard Barnett is becoming very popular management consultant. He is a management consultant based on spiritual type of management. He has written a book, Liberating the Corporate Self. And he, he has started as a business, as an advice, advisor based on spirituality. And who are the clients? Swiss, Swiss government, World Bank, they are the clients. In Japan, Buddhist style of management, they are the big signboards, Buddhist style of management will be given here. Vedantic style of management is very popular now, not only in India, but coming, the wave is coming in America, Ford, Boeing and many other companies are now adopting the Vedantic style of management. The holistic style of management is coming into war and that is why M.R. Thyssen, the management consultant of Amsterdam, Netherlands, very nicely puts it, if we, we must have a paradigm shift in our approach towards management, <coughs> we must have a holistic paradigm and if we do not have this holistic paradigm, then we will have paradigm paralysis. If this holistic paradigm is not taken into account in our everyday management field, or even in the corporate sector. Value-based management is becoming important. Norman Vincent Peel and Kenneth Blanchard, the great management consultant and the management author of many books, they have brought out a book, The Power of Ethical Management. And in the front page it is written, you need not cheat in order to win. And inside story it is written, to work for only profit is like playing tennis with your eyes towards the scoreboard rather than on the ball. To work only for profit is like playing tennis with your eyes towards the scoreboard rather than on the ball. What happens? So, the holistic paradigm is coming. The spiritual based management is coming in the forefront, everywhere, in all countries. 
Aspen Institute of Management conducted its international seminar. This is a training institute training the CEOs of most of the multinational companies of the world. They had an international seminar in which very important CEOs of most of the companies of the world were present. They were shown Ajit Bora's film of Mahatma Gandhi. And after the discussion, they found out 40 great qualities in the life of Mahatma Gandhi which could become a teaching model for most of the executives and managers. Servant leadership is a new word that is quiet. Robert Greenleaf, as you know, he has found out that new concept of servant leadership. He has written a book on servant leadership and it is becoming a popular concept. But this servant leadership was being practiced by many eminent personalities in India much, much earlier. Of course, the first one was Sri Krishna becoming a charioteer, a servant of Arjuna, though he was a king Mepa. In our own times, Swami Vivekananda practiced it. He started Ramakrishna Mission in 1897 after returning from the America and Western countries to India for worshipping of the divine in human beings, various service activities. He started Ramakrishna Mission in 1897, but he gave the name of the organization as Ramakrishna Mission. It was not on his own name. Not only that, he did not take any power and position. He said, I am just a servant of my brother disciples. Whatever money he could collect from America, he gave, handed it over to his brother disciple Swami, uh, Swami Brahmananda and made Swami Brahmananda the first president of Ramakrishna Mission. He himself did not take any power or position. He practiced servant leadership. Mahatma Gandhi, he also practiced the servant leadership. Dr. A.P. Chandra Kalam, the president of India, came to Porbandar. As you know, I am from Porbandar, the birthplace of Mahatma Gandhi. He came to Porbandar to inaugurate one of the school buildings constructed by us as part of Earthquake Rehabilitation Project. We have constructed 81 school buildings and six colonies, 390 houses and uh, some other infrastructure at the cost of 200 billion of rupees as a part of Earthquake Rehabilitation Project. So he came to inaugurate one of the school buildings. There were 3,000 youths, gave a very nice speech, an inspiring speech. And then he was asked this question by the students. The students love him very much. The students asked him the question, Sir, what is the source of your inspiration? Then he said, normally I do not leak out this secret. <laughs> but this is the right place to leak out this secret. Then he said, I was a student of 8th standard and I was the monitor of my school. My headmaster called me and said, tonight you have to bring all the students to the school because they have to listen to the running commentary. 14th August 1947, India shall become independent, midnight, and you have to listen to the running commentary. So he said, I brought all the children to the school, we listened to the running commentary, Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru, the first Prime Minister of India, hoisting the Indian flag and the British flag going down, we became very happy. Of course, we couldn't understand the speech because we neither knew Hindi or English, we knew only Tamil. He was at the time in Rameshwaram. 